Hello, beautiful souls. So, I'm going to talk to you today about something that most people never consider, or at least that's what my clients in the Dream Queen program are telling me. Oh, I never thought about that. But before we get there to that most important thing that most of us never consider, let's smudge. Let's ground ourselves. Let's be in the sweet energy of Mother Earth. So, with all of our directions above, below, and center called in. So, just take a moment, place your hand on your heart, take a nice deep breath. And on your third inhalation, just go ahead and count to three before you exhale. And while you're doing that, while you're mindfully uh, breathing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw your essence down into your body from wherever it's been so far today, just allowing yourself to be open and available for all that the universe has for you. So we ask that your guides, your allies from the east, the dawn, the new beginning, and from the south, the passion, fire, and drive, and from the west, the watery fluidity, and from the north, the ancestral wisdom, above all our planetary allies and below all of our earthly sustenance. We ask that creator, the great hoop of life, uh, calls us together in wisdom, guidance, patience, acceptance, unconditional love, and most of all, to understand ourselves. So I've got a little altar going back here um, that I created so that we could be in sacred space, having this very sacred conversation. Because when you know yourself, and this is the this is the essence of shamanic work, is to deeply know oneself. And so often we don't consider what do we stand for. Because if you don't know what you stand for, you're not going to be able to stand against something. So let's just take a moment. <laughs> grab your pen, grab your paper, because this is going to be uh, a teaching show today. And hopefully every time we come together, you find a little nugget of wisdom. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to shake things up. So I'm just going to grab my rattle here. And the reason that I say shaking things up is because if we move along in the same paradigm all of the time, and we are complacent in that, then when we come to realize that this isn't where we want to live, this is not the environment that we want to cultivate, that we want to be kind and generous, and we want to be thoughtful and considerate of one another. And this is what this moving into the age of Aquarius is all about. It's about community. It's about connection. It's about conversation, not, not just um, a soliloquy where someone dictates what's going to happen for the rest of us. However, when you haven't spent time getting to know yourself deeply, looking at your imagination, what can I create? Look at your intuition, where is it guiding me? Knowing deeply who you are, and this is, you know, who am I? This is one of the big spiritual questions. Once we come to know that, the next question is, what do I desire? So what is it that's on your heart? And the third important question is, who do I serve? You know, we're all here to serve someone. And so when we ask those questions, when we know who we are, what we desire, and who we're here to serve, then we're on purpose. We have found our passion because we know ourselves. So in order for us to do that, I say we have to shake some things up. So let's just go ahead and do this. This is the oldest rattle. No, that's not true. 
I have one rattle that's older that I made for a personal purpose of um, not needing his direct me. And so this is my second oldest rattle. It's a gourd. It's got mountain goat here. Um, it, uh, it's, <laughs> it needs some more. It's got horse hair here. And you can see that it's got one of its little directions is starting to come loose. So it has the four directions there. So shaking things up doesn't mean chaos. I mean, look at what happens when I shake this. I'm betting that you begin to breathe more easily. I'm betting that you are open to a different perspective. So when we use a rattle, you know, this was the first thing that we used to, in the olden days when I had kids, this was the first tool, the first instrument that we gave them was a rattle because it wakes you up. And so, you know, babies are kind of jerky in their movements. And so they would be like, and so they would be waking themselves up, bringing themselves from one realm into another. So whenever you're going to modify some behavior, whatever it is for you, then um, take a moment, find a rattle, even if it is just a jar with some beans in it, and shake things up. It alerts, it alerts first of all yourself, every cell of your being, and then it alerts everyone around you, spirit or um, corporeal, that there's something new going to happen here. And um, up here, right there, nope, right there, <laughs> I'm still not used to that. Um, so right there is a brand new rattle that I found the other day. And, well, I'll show you. Hang on a second. But listen to this. Isn't that beautiful? So the thing about rattles, once again, this is a gourd, and it has all these beads over top of it that are in a net. So there are many ways for us to make rattles. There's many ways for us to shift up our energy and doing it from a place of the heart, knowing what's important to us, knowing who we are, allows us to be able to be more present, more conscious, more connected and aligned with our true essence. Because I believe that that's what power is, it's essence. And recently I was talking to someone who said that they felt like they were having their power sucked out of them. And I gave them the opportunity to look at that word power, which I find is very masculine, it's very over top of, it's dominant. But your true essence is your gel. It's who you are. It's what makes you up. And in my opinion, your essence is more important than someone else's power. Uh, when you are aligned with your essence, then this brings us back um, to talking about knowing ourselves. So just a second here, let me put that back up there. And when we are in that place, when we're in the place of knowing ourselves, then I can say from my heart, from my core, from my gut, from my third eye, from my consciousness, my crown chakra, I can be in alignment knowing whether something is Yahoo yes or hell no. So decades ago when I was in shamanic training, there one of my colleagues had this concept and she said, if it isn't immediately Yahoo yes, it's hell no. And so for years I practiced that because I believe that when you stop for a moment and you take something like that, it's either immediately yes 
or it's immediately no. And if your heart and your spirit and your soul aren't saying Yahoo yes immediately, then it's maybe not time to go back and ruminate on it. Maybe it's time to begin that process of knowing yourself. And when you can say hell no to something, you've set a boundary. And so many of us grew up with no boundaries or too many boundaries. We don't know how to set them for ourselves. And so we feel a little bit lost in the world. So when you know, and here's what I believe about everyone. Can I honestly say that? Hang on one sec. Yes, I believe that we're love. Some people get lost and go wildly astray, but I do believe our pure essence is love, which is how come we're in such a place of wanting to change things up right now because we can see that love isn't guiding the way, that other things are guiding the way. And that we can take a moment or a year, however long your process is, to really get to know yourself. For instance, I know that I don't like slippery things under my feet. So one of my non-negotiables is that I don't like to live somewhere where it's going to be slippery under my feet. And since I know myself, I am allowing myself and even um, taking the moment to go beyond the allowance to really owning that slippery under my feet is not where I am best. And it becomes then one of your non-negotiables. So when you know things about yourself, you know, you do like cheese, you don't like cheese, <laughs> all of these things that you know, you like coffee, you don't like coffee, all of these things that you know about, then translate to a much more permanent foundation for you. They become your non-negotiables. And when you know that, when you know that, that you know, you have non-negotiables for your car. I mean, we don't even think about it like this. But truly, you have. You decided, you know, what make you wanted, what brand you were going to buy. You decided whether it was going to be how e e um, eco-friendly it was going to be, what color. I mean, down to all of these things with our cars, but not our lives. So this week, this week, what I'm bringing forth for you is to know yourself well enough to know the difference between Yahoo yes and hell no. And, and it's, not a, it's not a process. Once you truly know, I mean, for instance, you can know whether you like alcohol or not. You can know whether you like Coca-Cola or not. You can know whether you like corn or not. You can know these things. Why not these other things that are really foundational in our lives? Why don't we spend that kind of time? Well, we just haven't been taught that it's important. But when you take the moment, when you take the time to know yourself, and this is what the Dream Queen program brings to you. It brings to you not just the ability to know yourself, to know who you are. Oh, wait, I need a sip. Hang on. My little altar has got tea as well. So when you are, um, when you're in my program, what you find is that we come to know who are you. We come to know what do you stand for? What do you want? How do you want your lifestyle? And you know, growing up, there was no such word as lifestyle. <laughs> it didn't exist. And if it existed, it was some other echelon that I had no awareness of. But right now we get to choose these things. We get to know what kind of a lifestyle we want. I want a lifestyle with no slippery stuff under my feet. So that means no slow. No, no slow. Exactly. <laughs> mm. I am drinking something called a London Fog. It's Earl Grey. It's French vanilla syrup and a little cream. 
and it is supreme. Now, this is a deep knowing that I have. Um, my daughter introduced this to me probably 14, 15 years ago. It's been a staple in my diet ever since. Because when you get introduced to something that you haven't experienced before, most of us go, no, no, not going to try that. However, when you sample that thing, you might just find that you like it. So maybe one of your non-negotiables is being willing to sample things. You know, we think if we try something and we like it, that we're stuck with it for the rest of our lives. So let's have a sip on that. So the thing about the non-negotiables, and pardon me for just a second here, see the back of my hair. Um, the thing about non-negotiables is it gives you a certain sense ah, of certainty. <laughs> it allows you to not doubt yourself anymore when you know that these things are my non-negotiables. And there are plenty of places. There's business, there's marketing, there are relationships, there's food, there's housing, there's vacation. Do you know that most people spend more time planning their vacation than they do their life? So is that you? Have you ever done that? <laughs> I planned one entire vacation on food. We're going to go there and eat this. We're going to go over there and eat that. We're going to do that. <laughs> and I mean, it was a fabulous vacation, but I spent a lot of time on that. And that was back in the day when I didn't know about five-year plans, when I didn't pay attention to setting intentions and then attending those intentions and then um, participating in them and then bringing them into fruition. So long before that, I would spend, and my garden, I would spend weeks and hours on my garden, but not on myself. So this little personal adventure that you're having this week about non-negotiables comes from you knowing yourself. Um, if you know yourself that you don't like the heat, then you're probably not going to be drawn to move to the tropics. However, if you know, like me, that you don't appreciate something, then that gives you a boundary. And when we live with our own personal boundaries, when we live with our own personal knowing of what's tolerable for us, then we get to be in this place where we get to be in this place where we make decisions based on our heart, not what we think is the best thing for us at that moment. Some, I mean, often, most often, they are um, in alignment, right? Because what your heart wants and what your spirit wants and sometimes what your mind wants are not all connected. But if you know yourself, if you know your non-negotiables, the thing that happens out of that is that you come to know your priorities. And so, you know, I'm going to use myself as an example. No snow. So one of my priorities is that I live in a place where there is very little snow, if any, every year. And it was a priority for me. Now, you might want to live in the woods. You might want to do a homestead. You might want to live in the heart of the city. These things become priorities for you. And the thing that you're going to notice about your priorities and about your non-negotiables is that... They have this beautiful ability to mute and change. So you're not stuck with your, your non-negotiables from when you were 10 years old. You're not stuck with your priorities from when you were 15 years old. You know, once you've left those stages, your priorities, your non-negotiables, and therefore, where we're going next is your beliefs. When you have priorities... Then you get to look at your life. Is your life a match for your non-negotiables that maybe you've never even thought of before? And is your life a match for your priorities? 
because our beliefs about the world, about how we can be in the world, guide us, and sometimes in a very narrow little way. And this is what's going on right now on a bigger level here on planet Earth, the Earth School. This is what's going on. We're having an opportunity to look at our priorities. We're having an opportunity to look at our beliefs. And are our actions, because they come out of our beliefs, you know, if you believe, well, let's see. Ha, what's a good one? Um, oh, if you believe that you're not worthy, you're going to undercharge for your services. If you believe you don't have value, you're probably not going to offer your amazing spiritual gifts, which everybody has. And so one of my passions is to help you bring those out. And the way that we do that is we look at who am I? We look at what are my non-negotiables? We look at what are my priorities? And we look at what are my beliefs? And then finally, we look at what are your spiritual gifts that you're ready to bring out into the world. Because when you get solid knowing those things, you come to a place where you know that you have something of value to offer. And you know that you're the only one that can offer it. No one else is doing shamanic work in the same way that I am. I'm deeply psychological about it. I trained as a nurse and a psychotherapist and a dance movement therapist. So for me, the journey process, the shamanic journey process, is the most therapeutic tool you will ever find. And so it's part of the whole process of the dream queen. It's part of the whole process when I do soul retrieval for folks. It's part of my teaching for the Akashic Records. So you get to know that in you, your true essence is all knowing. It's just a matter of being able to tap into that. So I'm going to show you that drum beat that will allow you to tap into that. So here it is. This is my um, drum from the First Nations in Canada. It's uh, Thunderbird. And so the drum beat goes like this. And were I to do that for long enough, like about three minutes now, it used to be it took um, from seven to 12 minutes for the brain to drop into the theta state, which is what I'm doing when I'm drumming for you. I'm dropping your brain into a theta state. And so it used to take um, seven to 12 minutes. But now people drop into that state in two to three minutes and they access the quantum field of infinite potential or in shamanic terms, it's non-ordinary reality. So you get to look at, you get to grow and evolve yourself from not knowing who I am, not knowing what I stand for, not knowing what I stand against, not knowing my priorities, and being completely unaware that my beliefs rule my life, and coming to a place where you can know your spirit guides. You can have a guide for non-negotiables. You can have a guide for priorities and beliefs and changing your behavior. Because talking about it, talking about it is one thing. But action needs to follow. Information without implementation is mind frick. So give yourself a mental floss. Go ahead and allow yourself to be open and available. So see this little book right there? <laughs> right there. It's called Gateway to the Soul. And it's a book I wrote back in the year 2000. And what I left off, because I was a little intimidated to say this, imagination is gateway to your soul. And so that was the first little book. 
Fast forward five years and this book came out, Practical Shamanism, which is a manual to teach you how to be able to do a shamanic journey on your own. Um, I believe that my, uh, my prowess, my job, my purpose, my passion is to teach you to be able to access your own spirit guides, to be able to ask them any time, day or night, show me what I need to know about and then whatever is important to you. So as you combine this deep knowing of yourself, you also have a guide who has a higher perspective, a different perspective, more information than we get on this plane. And you have access to that. So the shamanic journey allows you to know yourself more deeply. And a couple of days ago, I was talking to one of my students who said, you know, I studied acupuncture, I studied Reiki, I studied uh, hypnotherapy, I studied, and he listed off the, all of the things. And then he said, but when I began to do the shamanic journey, what happened was it quickly gave me information on what to do in the practical world to sh change my life. And as a matter of fact, one of the things for him was that he'd been drinking a couple liters of Coca-Cola a day. So they told him to stop. Now, I didn't know that. And it wouldn't have occurred to me. His doctor didn't know it. No one knew this except for his guides. So they give you useful practical information in this plane so that you can grow, change, evolve, and become the person that you're meant to be. And hopefully... Hopefully, hopefully, you'll share your spiritual gifts with the rest of us. So, this is Shaman Weaver Sheila Baker. You're welcome to email me, Sheila at Shaman Weaver. Um, you can text me at 425-750-0510. Just say hey. Or you can hop on. Oh, you can join Enlightened Spiritual Warriors, where I teach there once a week. And then we can even more deeply go into all of this. So I appreciate you so much for taking your time to do the deep work of knowing yourself. To come to a place of being able to go, no, that's not for me. <laughs> Hell no. And Yahoo, yes, I'm drawing in more of this in my life. So as you do that, what happens is your heart expands out. Your wisdom drops down from the mental into the physical and into your heart. And you know what? Your heart radiates out 360 degrees all the way around you. And let's do this. Let's energize our hands and give away some love. So just rub your hands together until you can feel the warm. Place them on your heart. Take a nice deep breath. And I open fully to give, accept, and embrace all the good the universe has for me. Let's do that one more time. I open fully to give, give it away, give it away, give it away, accept, big old bowls with your hands, and embrace, put it in your heart, all the good the universe has for me. Namaste, a whole bliss, and in case no one has told you so far today, you are amazing. Thank you for being here, and non-negotiables, priorities, beliefs, they form your the basis of your life, and you might not even know what they are. So I hope this helped you with that. Thank you, everybody. I love you. Bye-bye.